breeding season is still in full force here. With a new surprise that we've got in the Dunbar herd, actually. Come on, Maya. Let's go. Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. I want to thank Team Move for sponsoring today's video. Hi right, guys, we are out here in Pasture 3. Marissa and I are about to go do a Big Joe herd check. Something I want to talk to you about real quick before we go see Big Joe. We got a huge surprise also. Marissa was actually the one who saw it. And then um, I was like, eh. Marissa was write about something and uh, I gotta give her credit for paying attention uh can't wait to go show you the new surprise that we've got in the Dunbar herd actually we gotta check the big Joe herd first we're gonna go see Dunbar and show you what has happened over there complete surprise also want to tell you about our sponsor today guys Timu guys if you haven't been on Timu you gotta check it out you can get so many cool products and get lots of goodies there if you don't know anything about Timu, Timu is a new online marketplace where you can find bargains and save a bunch of money. Guys, Timu is the number one free shopping app on the App Store right now. Just start searching for your favorite product. You'll discover so many great deals and products on the Timu app. You guys take a look at my recent cart of all the items that I ordered from Timu. Some of the products that I got was a flexible garden hose for the ranch. I got some binoculars to keep in the ATV and help check the herd and check for new babies. We found something on the Timu app that was perfect for the ranch. We got the 10 piece automatic chicken cup water. It's perfect drinking bowl feeder for chicks, ducks, geese, and hens. This came in clutch for us. It's really easy to use. All you had to do is drill your holes where you want them in a five gallon bucket. And then you place each little automatic filling water cup wherever you want on your bucket. Next thing you do, hang your bucket up. After placing your bucket and suspensing it in the air, fill your five gallon bucket up and you'll see the automatic filling water. This is a great way for all of your chickens to have fresh water. I thought these would be great for books. So I got some assorted colored dinosaur eggs. After being in water for a day or two, these little eggs hatched into little dinosaurs. Brooks loved it. My favorite product from Timu is a portable speaker that we got. And something to go along with that, we got a portable speaker mount for the ATV. While we're working on the ranch, one of the things that we always like to do is listen to music. With a portable speaker and the portable mount for the ATV, this makes it a lot smoother and easier. All right, right now, Timu has some anniversary sales that has some really good deals for all sorts of products in every category, you name it. You can find all your hidden gems and all your favorite bargains and deals right there on the Timu app. Go download the Timu app and search for the code DKD4252 to get a $100 coupon bundle for free. Still hadn't had her calf. Jeez. Jeez, mama. You've got to be close. Here comes Big Joe. Hey, big fella. changing colors.
in, let me in. Watch the blackberries. Yikes. Looky here. Surprise, surprise. Here it is, guys. Looky there. Guys, this is the Dunbar herd. That means those are Haas babies. Haas has had his first two babies and here comes Mr. Dunbar hey buddy been busy hey babe <laughs> okay so we came out here a couple of weeks ago if you guys don't know what herd this is, this is the Dunbar Haas herd, okay? And that was Dunbar um, pushing Haas away. <laughs> Breeding season is still in four fours here. Um, so what we did was we have, we've got a 10 females. They're two years old now from Canada. It's called the Wolverine Bison. That's where they came from. And then we've got nine heifers from South Dakota along with Haas. So we had we had 20 females in this pasture. And then there's a couple of ours that we raised that are in this pasture as well. So uh, there's Dunbar. But what happened is Haas was with these ladies for a long time. He was the only bull. And then we brought Dunbar over and he joined this herd kind of being diverse with our genetics from South Dakota, some Canada, some local, uh, with, which is Dunbar, uh, mixing our genetics around and stuff. Well, we came out here a couple weeks ago and we were just doing a normal herd check and Marissa started looking at some of the females and said, Dusty, I think uh, she's pregnant. She looks pregnant. She looks pregnant. I think, what was it? Like 139, 105. A couple of these females, see the yellow tags right here, they're part of uh, Wolverine Bison, they're from Canada. And then the white tags are from South Dakota. There's Dunbar, Haas is back there on the hill because he just got pushed, which is natural. Dunbar is the main breed bull here, it's a mature bull. Haas is two years old, so he's gonna get pushed around a little bit. For now, that all could change when they get older. But Haas was in there with them, and uh, for the longest time, but uh, Marissa started noticing them. We got, got to looking at them, and these females look pregnant. And uh, I don't like to use the female parts term because there's kids that watch this. But I say female parts just to put it a, a nice way. The female parts was showing signs of getting close to having a calf. And then their udders, you can see their udders starting to drop a little bit and develop. And so those are two initial signs that you think they're about to calf. And so we saw that about three of them. All of a sudden we've got two red dogs born one day apart. And so there's good things about this, but there's also bad things about this because one, it's a little early. So if you don't already know, bison can't breed until they're two. And I've always said that, but somehow uh, these females must've been healthy enough to be able to breed. Uh, to cycle. Yep, absolutely. Marissa's standing right here next to me. Uh, they were um, mature enough to cycle, um, which meant would have been last September, October time frame, basically. And um, now they're calving. Now, 
another part is well she's in heat he's messing around with her this is a good time right here oh dumb bar <laughs> yep breeding season still in full force here so bad thing is one i don't like them to have calves too early don't like that um the other part is it has been so hot here and um it is not good for these females to have calves in the middle of an oklahoma summer and uh, we got 100 degree days and stuff and these are first timers so anytime that they have a baby their first one these are considered first timers and as a first timer it's always can be a little dicey not with bison necessarily but you definitely worry about first timers luckily these two were born and were awesome and doing great got their uh, you can see one of them little little bitty right there i don't know what they are I haven't been up close to them yet but we pulled up and and um saw them on the hill by themselves because we always come in and we count all of them in this herd and then when you're short a couple animals you start to look in and sure enough we had two red dogs a day apart so that's exciting to have more red dogs that puts us at 11 there's a nine what we just left the big joe herd and now there is two in this group so yeah i would also note i mean they cycled because they're born in the north they're born earlier technically yes they drop the calves are dropped you know earlier in the year so the maturity wise for us they wouldn't cycle down here just for the sheer fact that usually they're not born until may and june july august and up in the north a lot of times they're calving when dusty april i mean they could they could calve all the way up till march or like as early as march and even in mostly april like i know scott in south dakota um with antelope creek bison dakota pure bison they have a big portion of their calves in april which would have been awesome if we had had ours in april ideally if you could get april and may that would be b the best because hot season it really starts to hit kind of in july and august is when it hits hard mid-june is when it starts to warm up typically you want to have those babies early now do we have some sort of control over that maybe now what they do up there is they keep their bulls separated they keep their bulls away from the females most of the year and then right was breeding season starts to approach maybe june ish they start to bring their bulls back in that's something we could do it'd be a major challenge with dunbar and big joe as you probably already know um from our experience about a month ago didn't go well for dunbar he's doing great now he's got his whole herd and whatnot he's fighting hoss off so uh, ideally we wish we could have calves earlier um but in the south we typically for some reason maybe the climate and all those conditions we don't have our babies until starting in may and roll into june and in this case august july we have got calves not ideal for the heat but happy to uh happy to have new calves no bad conditions did it all on their own you cannot complain about that and you can just appreciate that um, compared to what we've been through earlier this summer and recently with the texas cow a bell star losing a calf and those situations as well so can't complain happy we got two new red dogs and their first time mamas so
getting some hay. Got Marissa with me. We uh, got our neighbor's bell hauler. Hauls like seven bells. And uh, so what's cool about this is, you guys look right back over there. You recognize that place? This is our neighbor right across the road. They had this uh, this hay meadow on their way to their home. And uh, it's basically was all native. I mean, here's some of it left over right here. And it was, uh, he brushed hard to early in the summer and we had so much rain. He, I told him, I said, hey, I said, um, hey, if you let that grow up, we'll cut and get hay off of it. I want native grass so I can spread it around our pastures and whatnot. And um, I said, let me talk to my uh, hay guy, which is Richard, who also owns uh, that, uh, that trailer there. Great neighbor. And I said, hey, if, uh, if uh, you'll let us, let's, let's get this cut. And he said, sure. So we let it grow up a little bit higher and dry out which it's all, it's been dry. And uh, he said, and I said, let's bail it. And so we're basically taking this right here and moving <laughs> right across. It did really well. It's not a lot of acres, but we got 11 bells out of here and that's 11 more that'll get us through. They wanted a bell, so I gave them one and uh, basically just paid Richard to cut our hay and Marissa and I are gonna haul it right across the road, stack it, and we've got native hay. Being able to have a connection with our neighbors and be able to get hay off their property instead of cutting hay on our property is going to help us a bunch because we need the grass for grazing. Oh, here's Brooks's new kitty. This is Lizzie. Lizzie, the new cat. Oh, yeah. She's becoming a, she's more of a house cat, but likes being outside during the day. So, Brooks is a new, uh, new buddy. But, um, Having, uh, being able to have a good relationship with our neighbors and get hay from them is going to be tremendous for us. And we got to stock up. And now that we're back in another drought, hay may become more expensive and uh, uh, lower in quantity because everybody's buying it up. So get it while we can. And uh, luckily we have good neighbors to be able to cut hay off their property when they weren't even doing that, you know, brush hogging or uh, just cleaning up their own pasture. I saw an opportunity and used their native grass uh, to turn it into hay. I want to thank Timu for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description. Use the code DKD4252. I want to thank my wife for her help today as well, helping me haul hay. A lot easier when you got a driver and just follow you around and pick up those hay bales. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you guys next time.